Hi, welcome to my studio. My name is Beth, and I'll be your art instructor today. Today we are going to do a project that has to do with moving parts on art. And I have a couple examples here of two projects that I made where the parts move. It's called kinetic. And when you add an element of art, then you get movable art. Here's a butterfly that wiggles and the wings move. For this project, you're going to need a few supplies. The first thing you need is some craft sticks. Now you can use the sticks that do not have a notch in them. They look like popsicle sticks, but they're actually called craft sticks. Or you can get the kind that have the notches and they come in all different colors and sometimes they just come in a plain tan color, but any of those will do. You only need four, maybe six, depending on the project that you're doing. And today we're going to use six because you're going to need all of those to create the movement in your artwork. You will also need some tacky glue. Okay, this is uh, Aileen's, but you can use any glue that is thicker than the traditional school glue because it needs to hold really well. And you're holding an object to glue it together rather than a thin glue. You will need several rubber bands. doesn't matter what color they are. They just need to be nice and strong. And I'm going to show you why you're going to need an assortment of those. You will also need pencil and paper. I always start a project with pencil and paper to draw it out before I actually do it, just so that I can make sure that I'm on task and I don't waste supplies. Along with that, you're going to need some markers. It can be a permanent marker or it can just be a water-based marker, but this so that your lines will show up when you're doing your drawing. You'll need a pair of scissors. It doesn't have to be real sharp, just regular cutting scissors. Now I am using cardstock. You can use construction paper, but you need to have some paper that number one has several different colors in it, but also it's a little heavier than just regular uh, plain white paper. Okay, and you'll see why in just a moment. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're going to put our sticks together because that is the basis for our moving object. Okay, and this is four, and I'm going to show you how to put those last two on. But this is basically the movement of your object. And you can have several that go in this way or that way. But for today, we're only going to work on these four. This is an example of one that I used. And I just used regular craft sticks that did not have the notches. Those had notches. You just have to be careful. Even though it's very flexible, you want to make sure that it doesn't slide up and down. So you can use these and they work really well. So this is what it's going to look like, only we're going to be using the ones with the notches. Okay, I'm going to switch my camera so you can see my hands. So let's get started. All right, this is my butterfly. I'm going to turn it upside down so you can see how it's put together. Again, four-way notch and then two on the side. And my bird, It's the same. It has that four-way notch with two on the side. Okay. Now I talked about using a piece of paper okay, and pencil. The reason for that is you want to make what's called a template. Okay. The reason you want to do that is so that you can draw out your shapes first before you cut the paper. Because if you just start cutting, you won't be able to determine how big the head is going to be, how big the wings are going to be, and again, you're wasting materials. So I always sketch it out depending on how big I want the tail. This is my tail section here. This is my wings, and I'm going to need, let's see, let me bring this over here. I'm going to need six pair of wings. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to cut six this shape. I'm only using one for my tail, but you can put several down here if you want. 
and this is my tail. I'm only cutting one. For the body, it goes right down in here. It's a long orange piece. I'm going to cut one. For the head, I'm going to cut one. And then I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper that's left over for the mouth and the nose. Okay. You can make this all one piece by just drawing a line like this so that when you cut, you'll have all one area. You won't have to glue. But I decided I was going to make mine a different color. But you can decide how you want yours to be. Okay. So I've got my pieces here. Then I'm going to lay them out. After I cut each section, okay, I have one of these and I have one of these. Now I'm going to need six of these. So I'm going to have to cut my paper six times. But for my <coughs> for my wings, I'm going to line it up like this since I need so many of them. And I'm just going to trace around it. I'm going to use my the thick side. And round and around. And I can probably squeeze another one on here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be close to the shape. And I try to make it a little bit bigger than my actual piece. I think I'm going to adjust this. Made that a little bit too big. But. And then you cut out the parts. Okay. And again, with the wings, I'm going to need six of them. And I've already cut out some, but I'm just going to show you how quick and easy it is. It's better to do them one at a time than to try to stack them up and try to cut six at one time. Because if your scissors are not like super sharp, it won't hold up to this really thick paper. This particular cardstock is colored on one side and it's blank on the other, but it's still pretty thick. Okay. So say I cut out six of those and then I cut out the tail. I'm going to go ahead and draw my shape on here. I'm going to have my feathers and I'm just going to curve a few. Again, I'm going along with the shape of the bottom of this. It's called a scalloped edge. So I'm just going to make some curved lines and put some feather lines on here. Down this way. And you can make as many designs as you like. You can go all the way up to the end where they come together or just do the edges. And because this is an imaginary bird, you can add whatever you like on it. If you want to put polka dots on, on the ends of the tail, like so, you can do that. You're only limited by your imagination. And because it's already colored in the background, you can come up with some really interesting designs. You can do the same thing with your wing. Now you need to think, okay, does my wing go this way or does it go this way? I'm going to have the round part, the biggest part is going to be the top of the wing. And as it gets narrow, that's going to be the bottom of my wing. So you're going to think about how are the feathers curved. Well, they're not curved down because that would be backwards. So I have a rounded edge here. And I'm just going to pretend that this feather comes all the way around. And this one comes all the way around. And this one comes all the way around. If I did it the other way, that would still work. And this is what it would look like. Now the other ones that I did, I curved in the opposite position. But I wanted you to see, it really doesn't matter. You're the artist, and you decide. And again, I'm just making some really quick little marks. And again, you can embellish as much as you like. Okay? But those are how you're going to cut out your pieces. Of course, you're going to have the head. And like I said before, 
You can cut it out with the beak attached or you can do a separate one. So I'm just going to cut this one out real quick. And I've drawn it ahead of time. Makes it for nice, quick cutting. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So you want to keep your pieces in order so that you will know how to line them up. Okay. So I'm going to stack all of the wings that I've already cut. I'm going to put them over here. And here's my tail. And here's the head. I cut two just in case I change my mind on the face that I want. If you have extra, I always cut an extra piece of whatever it is that I'm doing. Because as artists, we sometimes change our mind. And if we decide not to use it on that one, we can use it on something else. Because the butterfly and the bird have the same body parts. On my butterfly, I just made the body a little bit longer. And on both of those, you're going to very gently fold in the center. Just make a little tiny crease. It doesn't have to be big but you want to have it kind of curved a little bit. And you'll see why in just a moment. Now when it comes to putting my sticks together, okay, I'm going to do these two over so you can see how I assemble these. I'm going to use two, two blue ones. And it doesn't really matter what color you use. And again, you can always color it a different color if it doesn't have any dye on it or any kind of markings on it. When you're working with rubber bands, you need to test your rubber band first. Make sure that it's nice and strong. If you don't, this will be what happens. Rubber bands have a shelf life and they sometimes get really brittle, and especially if they're in a pack with a hundred other rubber bands. Or they may be too thin and then they snap. So when you're working with them, you want to make sure that they're nice and strong and flexible. Okay, Never put them close to your face because you might get snapped in the face. There's nothing like getting snapped in the face with a, a rubber band. So always keep it away from your face. Now, the way that I'm going to put this together is I'm going to wrap around these two notches right here. Okay, I'm going to go around this way first. And then I'm going to twist, but then I'm going to come un underneath and wrap this all the way around like so, and then twist it on top. And I'll repeat that again, okay, for my bottom one. I'm going to use a different color. I think we'll use yellow this time. Okay. Again, I'm going to test my rubber band. This one looks like it's a little bit too skinny, so I don't think I'm going to pick that one. And this one is a little bit too thick. If it's really hard when you test it, if it's hard to pull it apart, that is not a good rubber band to use. You want to get something kind of in the middle, maybe like this one. This one looks nice and pliable. Okay, It has a lot of give to it, so I'm going to twist it around my finger like so. And you want to do these separate. You don't want to put one here and put one here. These two parts that intersect are called a fulcrum. I'm going to go around first to hold them together. I'm going to twist. Twist it in the back like so. And then I'm going to pull both of those through the center. The reason I'm doing that and I'm not just going around and around in one area is so that these continue to move. And then you just pull it on one side and then pull it on the other side. That way I have movement. If I put a rubber band around and around and around, it's going to be too tight and it will not move at all. My fulcrum is where they come together, but they need to be moving. They need to be able to move. So now I'm going to place this one on top and this one on top. So here you'll notice that this stick is on top of this one. And this stick is on top of that one. So I should have two that are on top. And then these two are on top. So when I assemble it, I'm going to always have <clears throat> these two on top. 
So when I put these two together, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to test my rubber band. Okay, that one looks kind of skinny. Uh, this one, this might be a good one. Again, I'm going to stretch. This one's a little bit tighter, but it's nice and sturdy. I'm going to wrap it around first to hold them in place. And I'm going to slide it right in the notches. That's one of the things about using these with a the notch. It slips right on and it stays in place. So I'm going to twist it one time and come back through the center because I still want these to move. Wrap it around. And depending on how tight or how loose your rubber band is, you may only be able to, to wrap it around maybe one time. And then I'm going to put it in that first notch. I can still move it because you want to test as you go. That's important. And let's see. Here's one that was too thick and it snapped already, so I don't want to use that one. Um, maybe this purple one. Hmm. I don't think so. I think I'll use this red one up here. It seems to be just right. I'm going to test it. Wrap it around my finger. Because sometimes even after you test it, it will snap on you. So I'm going to make sure this yellow one is on top. And if you don't have them color coded, you can just put T for top, B for bottom. So when you're putting it together, you know exactly where they're going to go. I'm going to wrap it around nice and snug. Make sure it's in the notches. I'm going to twist it. And this one feels really tight, so I'll probably only be able to wrap it around one time. And then I'm going to put those two together. Good. All right. Nice and tight. And again, it's still moving. Great. Now to add my third one, oh, my third section, that's the ones that are on the end. So I'm going to turn sort of my blue is still up here at the top. And we're going to put one here and one here. Now, what I'm going to do this time, instead of having my sticks on top, because it's getting awfully crowded up there, I'm going to put these on the back. And I'm just going to slide my sticks right underneath this part of the rubber band. And you can push one or two. Okay. And line that up. And if it doesn't line up, you just take it out and put it through the other one. So you're going to get a straight line going all the connecting these two. Because now these are on top. And I'm going to take the other one. And you can slide again one or two right along that notch. So now instead of holding it here, I can hold it down here and get my movement. I can do back and forth and I can do on top like so. Okay. All right. Now that I have the base done and I've had my pieces cut out, now I can glue it together. You're going to be doing this in sections. Because we're working with wet glue and you're working with a heavier object like paper, and in this case, we're working with craft paper. I'm going to use a stick to get my glue out. Kind of keeps my hands clean. The first thing I'm going to do is glue the head and the beak together. I'm just going to add just a little bit of glue. Put it right on here. Now, this is going to be the bottom part. So I'm gluing it, but when I glue it onto the body. I can put it on top or I can put it on bottom. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of up to you. So here's one where I glued it on the bottom. So you decide on which look that you want. In this case, I want the beak to be on top. So it's actually separated. So I'm going to set that aside and decide now how far down the body. I don't want to put the head way down here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue and I mean a little, because you want to get 
a little bit tacky. If you put too much glue on an object, it takes way too long to dry. And it'll just be slipping, slipping, slipping around. So I'm going to very gently, I don't need to put any glue on this one because there's plenty on this one. Sometimes I'll just pat it and blow on it. So what happens is glue sticks to glue. That's why it's spread around. It's a mix it for a thin, thin coat by dabbing it like so, and it takes less time to dry. So I put the head and the body together. Now I need to think about how is this going to get assembled. If I try and glue the body all the way down, I'm going to have a big opening right here. So only part of this is going to touch. And I'm going to glue it onto the blue part of my stick. If I put too much glue on my rubber band, it will not move. And since I want it to glue to the top of my stick, that is where I'm going to put my glue. And remember how I curve this in just a little bit? Well, none of the body is going to actually touch. Just the head part. This part right here is going to touch right here. And very gentle. I'm going to turn this over so you can see. Now while this is drying, you can also put a little piece of tape to hold it in place. And you can use uh, clear tape or masking tape. But usually it takes about 10 minutes for it to dry completely. So I'm going to have this hold it in place. And you can either leave this on, because it doesn't really matter, it'll be underneath. Or after it dries, you can pull the tape off. So right now, we're just going to glue. And as you notice, the body is not touching. Very gently pressing so it sticks. The sticking point is right here. Okay. And it's still kind of wet, so I'm going to test it just a little bit. And you can have your body going straight. I think I'm going to have mine a little bit to the side, a little bit more to the side right here. So it's kind of in the middle there, but it's to, mostly to the right. When you begin to assemble, I usually start with the tail, because everything is going to overlap on top of that. So before I glue this down, what I want to do is layer it. Okay. So I have put these over here. And there's one going this way. You want to line them up to make sure that when you drew them, they were all going in the right direction. Okay. So I'm going to use these two. I think on this one, because my wings are pretty big, I may just use two instead of six. So I'm going to have a set of wings that are here and a set of wings that are here. Like so. So that's how I'm going to assemble it. Now to practice ahead of time before you glue it, again, you can use tape. That way you can test to see if they're knocking each other around. Because if they are, you're going to have to move it. So I'm going to put one wing here. And this is just temporary so I can see exactly where. And I'm only putting glue underneath this part. So my next piece is going to get glued right here. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm just rolling my tape and I think I'm going to put my piece of tape right here because I want this stick to move and you can just kind of play around with this and decide exactly where everything goes Two. And again, this allow, allows my wings and my body. I'm testing, testing. Okay. So this one is going to go here. All right. Now you can see I still have a hole right here. So it's a good thing I have an extra wing I can put another wing going in here. I can bring in another feather that maybe goes all the way up the back. Let's see how that, I kind of like that design. You see all this is done by taping it first. This is going to tell me exactly where I'm going to put my glue to see if it still, yep, it still moves. See how it's moving? So now that I know exactly where everything is going to go, I can take off piece by piece and glue right in that spot. Okay. So it's just unlimited how many different ways you can put your bird together or your butterfly or any other project that you want to move around. So I'm going to put this one over here. This one I'm going to glue down later. But as you can see, butterfly is done the same way. I use the same pattern. And again, you can use your marker to help you decide what patterns you want to put. You don't always have to put feathers. You can put any kind of organic designs. They work really well in this instance. You can put an extra layer of feathers. You can have more than one line here. You can use some of the same design like I did with my butterfly. And when you finish, you will have a movable object called kinetic art. I hope you had a lot of fun watching me. Now it's your turn to make your bird fly away. Until next time, have a great afternoon and enjoy your craft.